Hey everybody, Jason here from CNC Labs. Today I'm going to walk you through the installation of the long mill spindle kit. It's not going to take too long, maybe about 15 to 20 minutes to uh, disassemble the router mount and put it back on, get your spindle on. The longest part is going to be the drag chain. Uh, your Allen key is necessary for the router mount and a very small flathead screwdriver is perfect for the drag chain. After that, I'll show you how to connect the electronics to the control board. And at the end of the video, Johan will walk you through the software installation side of things. And I'll get you up and running and cutting in no time. So come join us. The first thing you'll want to do is to jog the router over to the top left corner so that you can access the four mounting screws for the router mount. The next step will be to remove the router itself. Undo the two screws in the router mount and then just simply slide it up and out of the way. At the back of the machine, use the small flat head screwdriver I mentioned earlier to open the tabs on the drag chain. Remove the cord for the router out of the drag chain. Undo the small screw holding the drag chain end to the X-Rail with the Allen key. Move the drag chain out of the way, exposing the back of the 65mm router mount. With the Allen key, undo the four screws holding the router mount to the gantry plate. If you are having difficulty removing the four screws, you can raise the router mount a little higher by removing the two screws for the anti-backlash block. This will get you a little bit more access. With the four screws removed, we can now install the 80mm spindle mount. The process is the reverse of removal. I install the first few threads on each screw. It makes it easier to align the screws to the holes on the back of the router mount. Once the screws have been installed and tightened, refasten the drag chain end to the x-axis and reinstall both screws for the backlash nut if they were removed. Back at the front of the machine, remove the two screws from the front plate of the 65mm router mount. The screws will be used to mount the 80mm front plate to the spindle mount. Attach the front plate to the spindle mount. Do not tighten the screws at this point. Lower the spindle mount as low as it can go to install the spindle. If you find the spindle won't slide in smoothly, twist the spindle back and forth until it, the bottom half of the spindle is through. Rest the spindle on your work surface while you tighten the two screws on the faceplate. Don't forget to have the logo facing forward. Mount the VFD somewhere accessible. It doesn't have to be beside the controller like mine, but close enough for the communication harness to reach. Don't disconnect the large wires from the VFD to run them through the drag chain. It can be difficult to install them correctly, and you run the risk of damaging the VFD. Take the small communications cable and plug it into the back of the controller. This step is not shown but run the large harness through the drag chain and close the clips. With the spindle harness in the drag chain, it's time to connect it to the spindle. Note the tabs on the harness connector. Ensure to align it with the matching slots on the spindle. Push the connector onto the spindle and tighten the lock ring. Plug in the VFD into the power supply and you're ready for the next step. Open G-Sender and connect to your machine to follow along with the next process. Now that the wiring is done, um, we have to configure 
um, your CNC machine to work with um, the CNC spindle. So what you do is you first connect to um, your super long board. So you come into G-Sender, you connect to it. And once it's connected, you head over to the firmware tab and you search default spindle. You can also search by the number 395 and you'll also bring up the same setting. So under default spindle, you have various options. Um, out of the box, it's uh, SLB spindle is selected and you'll just want to change it to H100 and hit apply. So after um, the setting is applied, what you need to do is you need to power cycle the board because there are additional settings that will only be revealed after the board is um, um, power cycled. So we can close the firmware tool. We can come to the SLB. We can switch it off and we can switch it on again. Next, um, in G-Sender, um, you basically reconnect to the board. So you say connect to machine, select the SLB again, and it an, an alarm might um, be triggered, but you know if it does, then just ignore it for now. Just click, click to unlock machine. And then go back to the firmware tab and search default spindle. Now the, the setting you will want to look for this time is um, has the number 476 and it says spindle zero Modbus address. So sometimes it's already configured to the Modbus address we want, which is two, but in case um, it's zero, it's one or any other value, um, you'll want to change it to two. And once you change it to two, you hit apply new settings. You wait for it to um, be applied and you power cycle the super long board a second time. So you switch it off and you switch it on again. Now, the last thing we want to do is also configure G Sender to actually um, control um, the spindle. So the way you do this is you head into the settings tab for G Sender. You head into the spindle laser um, section and you turn on spindle slash laser. Now you'll see uh, that the spindle laser tab is added but um, you, what you actually want to do is you'll actually want to turn um, G send. You'll want to close G Sender, and you'll want to open it again. This will configure some of the settings inside G Sender, so the next time you turn it on, um, the defaults will be properly applied. And the last step is just to connect back to the board. Go to Spindle Laser. And you'll see that the H100 spindle is a, uh, is, has been selected and you have all the functionality you need to actually control the spindle. So in this case, um, I'll set the speed to its lowest, 7200 RPM, and I'll click clockwise. And here you'll see that the spindle starts spinning. Now I'll also hit the stop button and I'll see the spindle stop. Now, this basically completes the installation um, of the spindle and all the software configuration that's, that's necessary. Um, if this is a brand new spindle and you've never set this up before, just got it out, to, uh, out of the box, we do have a um, spindle burn in or warm up um, piece of code that you can run so that it reduces, distributes the grease inside the bearings and it promotes longevity. Um, and you can find that um, alongside the resources for the spindle kit.